four, three, two, one. นอกพบคุณพระเจ้าที่พี่น้องสละเวลามาในงานจบโรงเรียนของเข้าเดเวนซึ่งเป็นหลานสายของท่านคุณเดเนนาบุรีเนาะก็อยู่ใจร้ายที่เพิ่นได้จบโรงเรียนนี้ก็จุดประสงค์ก็เพื่อเหตุจบโรงเรียนเพิ่นแต่ว่าสองทิศก่อนแล้วเขาจะเหตุเดียวเนื่องจากว่ามีโควิดรบกวนเนาะเขาจะเนื่นมาฮอดทิศที่สามมือนี้เมื่อนี้ฮันเป็นมือเขาจะเหตุสลองให้ไกลเปิลกําลังใจให้ไกลเปิลบัวลูกหลานเพื่อได้จบเขาก็เหตุเพื่อกําลังใจให้ลูกหลานเรื่องที่ว่าซื้อตัวขึ้นกับคือเจ้าเองน้องจะเห็นอย่างโตให้อย่างโตก็ชอบใจที่พี่น้องมาห่วงในงานวันนี้เนาะเดี๋ยวนี้ขอท่านคุณจะบอกสิ่งใดบอกฮะให้อธิษฐานก่อนหมอโอเคก็ได้สั้นเอาห้องจานที่ฐานคุยสุดเปรย์เนาะสัตว์การในพระเจ้าพระบิดาพระบุตรพระมิญญาบริสุทธิ์ขอบพระเลพระพุทธพระองค์ซึ่งพระองค์ทรงให้โอกาสเวลาให้พวกคนมาเต้าห้องกันเพื่อสลองเรียกว่าให้กําลังใจแกลานเดเวนซึ่งทางในจบการศึกษาบางต้นพระเดือนเจ้าท้าทรงอวยพรในทรงนําพาเพื่อนในการต่อไปที่เป็นเดือไปศึกษาประทังเพียนต่อบอกให้คอยพระองค์ทรงนำพาให้สติปัญญาในการศึกษาเหมือนของเพื่อนและทุกสิ่งทุกอย่างคอยพระองค์ทรงโอยพรแต่อภิพานตาไอ้น้องพบขวาเพื่อนพ่อแม่ตุ๊กเอาเพื่อนก่อนคอยพระองค์ทรงนำพาได้ด้วยแต่ขอบคุณสันสันพระองค์สามแรงวันนี้ที่พี่น้องมาเต้าห่มกันเพื่อพวกคุณจะได้ได้ฟังการเชิดสนาของพระคำของพระองค์ด้วยแต่ขอบคุณในสังสรรค์พระองค์สําหรับทุกอย่างในวันแรงวันนี้อธิษฐานในพระนามพระไมสุภิเจ้าอาเมนเอาพระเสริญท่านชวนเป็นจะเล่าชิ่งไหนเช่นหนึ่งเนาะสบายดีพี่น้องเวลาเป็นของพระเจ้าเนาะพิษหนักแต่มันเป็นเวลาที่เหมาะสมพระเจ้าจัดแจงไว้ให้เนาะเป็นมือนี้ก็สมควรมีความสมศีลยิ่งดีขอบใจพระเจ้าที่ให้เวลากับพวกเราในวันนี้เนาะแล้วก็ให้สติปัญญาแก่หลานที่ได้สามารถจบไฮสคูลสิตัวเพื่อนจะเสิบกาดโตโตไปแล้วก็เฮียนโตคิดว่าเพื่อนจะจบคาเลตเนาะมีความหวังนั้นแล้วขอบใจน้ำพี่น้องที่สละเวลามันมีคาแล้วก็สละสัพสินสละเพื่อแห่งที่มาสุ่มซื่นยินดีเหตุงานนี้เกิดขึ้นขอบขอบใจพี่น้องอะไรเนาะเอ๊ะท่านั้นแหละโอเคเรียบร้อยมาสุ่มซื่นพระเจ้าเนาะสำหรับข้าพเจ้าก็ไปได้ถามมาเพื่อที่ไปเห็นอย่างต่อคุณที่ว่าเพื่อนจะไปคาเลจต่อเรื่องนะให้เพื่อนบอกอีกเนาะอ่าว่าเพื่อนสิเพื่อนช่วยเรื่องไหน I didn't expect to have to say anything but I'm saying something Uh, first of all, I want to say I want to thank everybody for showing up today. Um, regardless of if anybody else shows up or you know whatever happens, I'm thankful for all of y'all being here and thankful for this graduation party. I want to uh, ask y'all to continue to uh, pray for me for whatever I want to do for the rest of my life. You know whether that's go to college first or work first or you know just I want to I want help on figuring out what I want to do because I'm not completely sure, but. Um, I'm going to continue, you know, put God first, and I believe that He'll help me, you know, throughout the way. Again, I want to thank all y'all for showing up. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Yeah, thank you so much for this opportunity, Devin, to speak on your behalf to kind of honor you, and it's 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 a pleasure and it's an honor um, that your grandmother and your grandfather asked me to give this message. Uh, before we go into this message, let's let's all um, go in a word of a prayer. Uh, dear Father God, Father God, thank you so much, Father. Thank you for all that you have done, Father. Father, thank you for. 
for your grace for, to allow us to be here and to, to honor Devin. But first, I must say that I must honor you first, Father, that for all of this to have had been possible, it was all because of your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, for dying on the cross. Please, Father, be with me as I honor you and your loving grace in all that we do, Father. May we glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, a little story. You know, there's, there's this young man. Uh, he was traveling to find his friend in a small backwards town, right? And in the road, uh, he comes upon a fork in the road, a split in the road. And then both directions point to the same town. Seeing this hitchhiker on the side of the road, he asked the hitchhiker, hey, does it really matter which road I take to get to this town? And the hitchhiker says, well, well, it doesn't matter to me. The point here is it may not matter to him, but it matters to you which direction you take. Now, you know, GPS. GPS stands for Global Positioning System. GPS, it's a great thing, you right? You know, getting around with accuracy. What a gift. Never get lost. But of course, people do get lost. And why do they get lost? For one, they get lost because they don't use it. Another is that they type in the wrong information. We all been there. We all got lost with our GPS. GPS only works is if you know how to use it and what to use it for. But how many of us here know where we're going in life? We could rely on our own GPS or we could rely on another GPS. It stands for God's perfect sovereignty. And, you know, today, like I said, I'm, I'm honored to give this message to, to my dear young brother here on his uh, great day. He's graduating for, from college. Um, but I want to give this message for all of us because all of us can benefit from this message as well. So the question is, is how do we make a journey in life? How do we start a journey? You know, in my main verse is going to be in Hebrews uh, chapters 11. But I want us uh, for us to go back and, and go back to Genesis. And we're going to talk about Abraham, right? And then, of course, the writer of Hebrew talks about how Abraham, through faith, he did something out of just pure faith. But let's go back to Genesis and, and how this was first recorded. So Genesis chapters 12, verses 1 to 2. Let me just read this to you. It says, the Lord had called to Abram, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. And I will Now, here's what the writer of Hebrew said about Abram, right? So Hebrew chapters um, 11, verses 8 through 10. says that by faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place where, uh, to a place he would later receive his, as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob who were heirs with him to the great, to the, of, of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations whose architect and builder is God. So how do we make a journey in life? How do we start a journey in life? First, we have to trust God. That's the most important thing, Devlin, is to trust God. As what we just read, look, look what uh, verse 8 said. Verse 8 in Hebrews chapters 11 says what? By faith, Abram, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went. Even though he didn't know, 
know where he was going. To trust is to have faith. And what is faith? Faith, according to the Bible, is the confidence in what we hope for and the assurance of what we do not see, right? Will you trust something that you will not see? We typically have a hard time trusting something that we do not see. Who do you trust? It's hard for you, and it is hard for me at times. It's hard to trust people if you don't first trust God. Do we have enough faith in God to trust him even though we don't see him? That's the question of life. Now, I recall the story of this captain. He's a Christian captain, and he prayed every single time he had a chance, right? Then one night, there was a big, massive storm that came through, and everybody was panicking, and everybody was looking for this captain who's a Christian. So they ran up to the captain's quarters and, and asked, where is the captain? And the captain was resting comfortably in his bed. The guy woke him up and said, hey, we have a storm. Why don't you pray for us? And then this captain says, hey, I don't just pray during the storm. I pray during the calm of the day. Because when the storm comes, that's how I sail my ship. Now, trusting God in tough times like a storm comes naturally if we first trust God in the sunny days, the calm storms, the calm weather. It's not like this captain didn't trust God in the storm. But it's that he trusts him to remember God in the storms because his relationship with God during the sunny days, same way with, with your grandfather, Max. You know, your, your, your grandfather, when he first came to the States, he shared with me that he had to work two jobs. And at one time, he, he had asthma, so he, has a, uh, he couldn't acclimate to this weather in Arkansas, so he had to move back to California. Because he had a hard time with his um, health. He had to take two jobs at times. And, you know, when, when his oldest daughter, your mother, tragically but sadly had to become a single mother because of circumstances out of her control, Max had to take the family, the burden of the family on his shoulders as a man so that you, one day, to be sitting here being honored by all these people. But you know what? He trusts. He trusts in God through the storms. But, you know, he hoped that one day will come, not just this day, but another day down the road that, that, that you will acclimate to be something more than this. So trusting God makes a difference every day of your life. So don't put in trusting God in the storms of your life. Trust in Him in, in those sunny days of your life. And the second way how we make journeys, how we start journeys in life, Devlin, is don't get too attached to things that don't last. Don't get too attached to that. Look at verse 9. Hebrews verse 9, chapters 11 says, By faith, He made His home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. How do you how do you live like a stranger in a foreign country? How do you do that? Well, you go on your day to day life where you are, but you long for your promised land. You long for for that time. You you long for that place where that God's going to give you. Same thing with you. You know, if if tomorrow you want to do something that you love. Don't hold on to it too much because the good Lord has something even better for you that's more permanent. So, you know, you don't want to hold on to something that is not the, the true thing that, that God gives you. You know, Max, your grandmother and your mother bust their butt for you to be where you are. He did everything he could. She did everything she could. She did everything she could so that you could be sitting here. And imagine what the God of the universe can give you. 
according to his will for your life if you trust and obey more than what you see here. Those are the things that you want to look forward to. Verse 10, it says that Abram, for he was looking forward to the city with foundations whose architect and builder is God. Abram, you know, he was going after a place that, that would last forever. And, and, and yes, I'm, I'm talking in a spiritual sense here, but this can apply to us as well, is that what we have now, it's not permanent. It's temporary. Our struggles in life, your struggle in life, God has something better. Abram lived with this principle of not holding on to something too tightly, because if you hold on to something too tightly, if it's ripped away from you, your hands hurt. It hurts. So if it's not the thing of God, if it's the thing of this world, hold on to it very loosely, my friend, because it will leave you when God yanks you out and puts you where he wants to put you. And this same principle that Abram has will guide us to our to, to, to the place where God wants us. And, and what, what, what are these principles? First is we have to have a relationship with God, not just knowing and, and, and understanding God, but to have a relationship. And the second thing it is to have a friendship, a godly friendship with other people that who will what? Who will bring you back to God. And, and a third thing is to have integrity. Integrity of who you are in and out, good or bad, up or, up or down in your life. When people see you, they know who you are. And with these principles, having a, re a relationship with God, having godly friendship with people that will bring you back to God, and having a solid integrity, a godly integrity, you develop a reputation. You know, I once heard that, what? Hardship doesn't develop character. It reveals it. It shows who you are through your hardship. For example, if we think about hard work, your grandfather, your grandmother, your mom work one job, two jobs at times. If you think about love and, and kindness, like the kindness that these people who is here today sweating, Setting up the stage for you so that can honor you, so you can get the glory today. Like your grandmother, your grandfather, worry less about themselves, worry more about you. That's love and kindness and dependability. What they've done, nine to five, Monday through Friday, sometimes Saturdays and Sundays, one job, two jobs. Even when he was sick, he shared with me, Max, he shared with me one, one time, he had an asthma flare-up. And he had to go to work the following day. But what did he do? He went to church and was wanting to sleep at church, trying to make sure that being in the, the sanctuary of the church that he was at will heal his asthma. That's not flare -up. You know, James chapters 1, verses 5 through 6, says it very plainly that... If any of us lack wisdom, we should ask God who gives it generously to all without fault, and it will be given to him. But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt. And if we look back to, to our verse in uh, Hebrews, Abram, Abraham, he faced doubt. Yes. There was delay in his promise. He was nine. He was 100 years old when he had Isaac. And the difficulties from all corners of um, where he was, from people threatening him and where he went as, as a foreigner. But, but, but he believed in God. He didn't give up. Brother Max, your grandmother, from his allergies and his asthma, and your mom having to support you as a single mother, they face their own share of doubts. Long nights of tears and worries about what tomorrow will bring. Face delays in their promise. 
the challenges and the difficulties, but what they believe in God. They believe in God. And they dream that this day will come. And it, it, it came. But yet, they, they, they still want another hope in that five years from now, ten years from now, you can have a degree under your belt. And they dream that this day will come. And, it, it came. and hopefully one day, you could bring them some grandkids. Who knows? I don't know. But that's the hope. They want the best for you. And this is what they want me to tell you. In that, to keep in your heart and in, in, in your mind as you journey in, in, in life is to always believe in God and never give up. You know, Devlin, nobody has an easy life. Maybe from our own perspective, someone else has a better life or easier than we did. But each has their own troubles, unique to their situation. You, Devlin, are uniquely made by God for a unique purpose. Your life up to this point is the way it is because God made it uniquely special for you. Okay? He puts you in the places that you have been. He put people in your life, circumstances in your life, because there's a purpose for you. Proverbs 3, uh, 12 says, and I'm paraphrasing that God disciplines those that he loves, like a father disciplines their son. God delights in you. That's why he disciplines you. He disciplines us. And, you know, in, in conclusion to my message is that what is the most important part of a journey? Is deciding where we want to go, I think. You know, there's a Buddhist guy from Laos. He becomes a Christian, okay? And some of his friends who are non-believers ask him, why have you done such a thing? So he answers, well, it's, it's like this. Suppose you're going down the road and suddenly the road, the road forks in two directions. And you, and you don't know which way to go. And at that fort where the road develops, there's two men. One is dead, the other one's alive. Which one would you ask to show you the way? That's what he, that's what he told his friend. John 14, 6 says, Jesus himself says that he is the way, the truth, and the life. So, so in this life, Devlin, you can either depend on your GPS, yourself or your electronics, your global positioning system, or you depend on another GPS. It's God's perfect sovereignty. Your life, my friend, is, is ahead of you. It's ahead of you, my friend. It's made possible because Jesus Christ laid down his life on that cross. And because of that, your grandmother, your grandfather, your mother was able to found strength in that to raise you to be a man that you are right now, a young man who's, who has his life ahead of him. So my young friend, my advice to you is to trust in the Lord and live your life and pursue your dreams worthy of their sacrifice. And, and don't depend on your GPS, but depend instead in, in God's GPS, God's perfect sovereignty. My friend, we love you. That's why we're here for you. That's why we're here sweating. That's why we're here setting the stage up because we, we love you. And with that said, my friend, good luck to your endeavors. I hope one day I can call you a colleague. I can say, hey, Dr. Devlin, I have a case I want to talk to you about. And that's what their hope is. Or, Attorney Devlin, I got a lawsuit on my hands. I need you to represent me. Who knows? But never hold on to anything too loosey right now, my friend, because God has something better for you. Amen? Congratulations. Let me um, have a pastor come up here and to give a little... Uh,
prayer and then we're going to enjoy the blessings that's set before us. Go ahead, Pastor. <clears throat> First of all, I would like to say congratulations and to you definitely to uh, finish your high school. And uh, so, what are your next step? In the college, work? Oh, the joy. Amen. Amen. And, and medical school, I think he said. Medical school. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's great. Just go for it. Yeah, just go for it. You, you can do that. By the way, don't forget, God will help you if you trust Him. Let's go pray. I all I can home can know. Kalong Palas be now. Prong Joka, Prong Song and Pajo Omni, Rong Song Sut from Koka, Prong. The Prong Song and Pajo Song Sam, Sub took sing, they look me. The Sivy took the one, could you nay? But I'm song with Kong Prong Joka, O Prong Joka, Bunny Poka, whom we come song singing the today can look land on Poka, Prong, Ku, Devlin, when they took a home here. High school from Chowka. Why from the song people wait for one pun, Mova Pincha, uh, Hessing Lessing, or Tam, Lua Pincha, Quetong Hien, Lua Pincha, and Vien, Koy from the song people wait for one and Nam Papun, Nakan and Long City from Penan, from Chowka, Boa Punja, you can lay on dial, Koy from the Sun, the Pohatsa, Koy Pun, uh, they knew God. ลูกเราเท่าขึ้นมากครับผมเจ้าเพื่อเพื่อจะเป็นเสียงสว่างให้แก่ผมเจ้าพระองค์เจ้าค่ะวันนี้พวกข่าวผมมีความสุ่มส
And they all like, Oh, no. 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 Oh,